I'd like to thank Colette Boston. My name is Dr. Delroy Brown. I'm here to support the empowerment of women, which is crucial if society is going to get better. Thank you. You can find me at greenhillsupermeal.com or you can contact me at my uh, office on Eastern Parkway, Eastern Dental, PC. I would like to thank my wife for supporting me and making me a stronger man. Hi, my name is Janine Mayers and I'm author of Infinite Love, The Pursuit book series. Happy Holidays from DJ Mario TV. If you're looking to find Kim Sue here art, just Google me. I'll be there for you. Ciao. Hello everybody. This is Blood for Believe in Yourself video and I am standing with a powerful sister. When I say powerful, I'm standing with an author. I'm standing with a woman who has many ideas and has her hands in a lot of different things but you know well worth things things that are really uplifting for women I'm standing with my sister Colette Boston how are you I sis? am great I am great you look beautiful smashing I love thank your you, dress thank you, thank and the you, shoes you. very beautiful thank I love you. it and this event Colette I know that you guys brainstorm and it took a group of you to put this together but this is just empowering and you know I am all for empowering and empowering women and doing things that are uplifting for women so tell us about this event and what what we are expecting in the future well this event was um, put on by basically a compilation of women who had done events here before and Deborah Jones who was supposed to be here today the facilities manager said you know what I think you would all do well together so we met and then we found out that yeah we had a lot in common why not do something together so um, Tracy unfortunately was not uh, was unable to be here but Kim Sue and Helen or I should say Diana were able to be here but it's called Women for Action Brooklyn Limited and it is something that is like a revival of us of the family also a sisterhood yes i yeah. like that even better a sisterhood. i like I that i came in and better. i sat and i was just really in a trance i just felt i felt that i belong do you know that's yes. what i felt as i yes. sat and I, listened. I felt like i belong and i just think it's really a great thing what you guys are doing because a lot of times women we as women sometimes we reinvent ourselves and there's nothing wrong with that but sometimes you get to a point where you don't know where you need to go and when you hear stories from other women it sort of open up your mind to the the opportunities that are out there for you I agree the possibilities yeah. become yeah. endless when you realize that other people are going through the same things that you thought you were the only one going through them and some of the thoughts that you were thinking and like she said it is a sisterhood yeah. it is but it's a international sisterhood yeah, not just the sisterhood an international sisterhood exactly exactly so with this empowerment series we were so very happy that the councilwoman uh, Lori Kumbo was able to be a part of this and although I had invited her I didn't expect her to show up and then when I saw her and then she knew the judge who was getting an award it was just like you can't make this stuff up. I know. Tell us about the award that you uh, that you were able to that you prepared. Um, let me just grab it. Okay. Okay. So, so tell us about the award. The award is called the Wham Award, which okay. stands for Women of Honor and Momentum, and it was something that I came up with, and I was trying to do something where we give credit while people still alive. Exactly. We give too many accolades when people die. Yeah, so, you gotta smell the roses. Let people smell the roses when they're here. Exactly, and let them actually be, yeah. be able to be happy about it. 
and be able to put it up and show that they are appreciated. You know what I love? When the moderator was asking each one of you about people that inspired you, and you said your grandmother inspired you. And I just felt that, you know what, way back then when, when our peers, our mothers and our fathers, you know, they didn't have much. But just, you know, they were so diligent and they, whatever they did, they were really disciplined and did things to help us. And, you know, those were really our role models because we learned from them. We learned so much from them. We learned discipline. We learned how to really face adversity. There's so much that we really take away from our, you know, our ancestors, our parents, you know, for whatever reason. Would you agree? I agree. Yeah. I never got to meet this grandmother. I never did. But do you know that her story, the stories my mom told me about her, impacted me to the day that my mom sometimes says, sometimes you remind me of your grandmother. And it gives me like this like sparkle within me just to think that although I never met her, that this, I'm like her. There's always a connection. I feel connected. My mother passed away last year. October. I'm so sorry. It'll be in a couple of weeks. It'll be a year since mom is left us. She, you know, she's gone. But I find myself doing and saying the things my mom used to say. And my children, they tell me, mom, you sound just like granny. And it's just really interesting because I don't even realize that I'm doing it where I just, it automatically happens. And again, this is part of who I am. My mother is part of me and I'm part of my mother. And this is what happened when you have, you know, family members. I mean, there's a little bit of everybody in you. Would you agree? I, I so agree, I so agree. My father was, a, was, was brilliant, brilliant. He was a genius. I have that. And I, my mom, she was very instinctual, um, very nurturing, and she was a hard worker. I have that as well. And then I have my aunties who showed me that you can be hardworking, loving, you can be kind. Um, they're the ones, you know, aunties tell you the little secrets mommy yeah. won't tell you. And um, they share things with you, teach you things, and they're closer in age so they understand you sometimes better than your parents. Exactly. So for me, um, my Auntie Mary and not being here, that really kind of hit home. Yeah. I started to tear up, but then I realized, you know what? You know, although I miss her terribly, she's in me, in there with me she's too. Here. For those of you who don't know, uh, Miss Colette Boston is also a writer. Hold on, hold on. And I brought her book because I wanted oh. to share it with you. Oh. She is a an author, and there's this book, this series that she did a couple, and, and she continues to do that because that's also when I say she wears many hats, she really does. And I love this book. I've read it, and I just think it's brilliantly written, and it has so many things that are so relevant today. What controls you? What controls you? What controls you? Uh. Tell us. What controls you? <laughs> um, I am beginning to realize that it's about legacy. Right. Truly, it's about legacy and family. And it's truly about knowing yourself and knowing your purpose. Those four things, once they are aligned, you will not only live your purpose, but you'll be a happy person. I agree. And on that note, let's just say the empowerment series. You and I on yes. three. One, two, three. The Believe empowerment series. series. Believe in yourself. Yes, baby. Dr. Brown, Dr. Brown is, he wears many hats. Dr. Brown is a dentist. He's also an inventor. Yes. Um, what else, Dr. Brown? I'm the chief dentist for New York State Military. 
he is the chief dentist. You see, Dr. Brown, and he's such a such a very humble man, and you would never tell that there's so much that he's accomplished. Tell us about you, Dr. Brown. Uh, I know you're from Jamaica, am I right? Yes, I'm from Jamaica. All right, Jamaican house. My grandmother was from Jamaica. My grandmother was from Spanish town. Never met her. She passed away by the time I was born, but that's part of my heritage. Well, so I embrace it. Well, part of my heritage is I was born in St. Anne's. Okay. And where I was born was called Green Hill. So okay. my product is actually named after the town that I was born in. I love that. I love that. I love that. Green Hill. So tell us exactly what you're, tell us a little bit about, you know, the product that you're promoting and what you, what you do. Okay. Uh, about 10 years ago, I started making porridge for my kids. Oh, I love and, porridge. I grew up on that. And it turned into uh, a love of just combining different ingredients. Yeah. And then about eight years ago, I started doing research. So I said, let me see, what can I add that could uh, make people's life healthier, health benefits? And that's what turned into, into Super Meal. I love that. So where can people find this porridge and stuff? You have a website. Tell us uh, about that. Greenhillsupermeal.com. Okay. You can order on the website. And you can pick it up at my office on Eastern Parkway. Right. Are if you, you on Facebook, Dr. Brown? Yes, but I'm not the one that does Facebook. Okay. Do you know your <laughs> Facebook name or no? What's the Facebook name? I think it's uh, uh, Dr. Brown or Green Hill Super Meal. Probably Green Hill Super Meal. But tell people where they can find you if they wanted to order. What do they do? If you want to order, just go to Google, put in uh, GreenHillSuperMeal.com, and you can order online, pay online. And if you don't want a mail-in charge, you can pick it up at the office on Eastern Parkway. Okay. If you had to change one thing about what you've done throughout your whole life, what would that be? I wouldn't, I wouldn't really change anything because even the, the adversities that I've been through has helped to make me who I am today. So if you change one thing, I wouldn't be the person that I am. I love that. That is brilliant. And there you have it. This is Dr. Brown. Dr. Brown, on three, let's say the Empowerment Series, you and I, on three. One, two, three. The Empowerment, Empowerment Series. series. <laughs> Javon, a.k.a. Bubbles. Happy holidays for DJ Mario TV. Mwah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. When you meet somebody that talks about really making somebody feel good and making you feel comfortable and relaxing you and, and doing the things that are coming into your home and doing all this for you, so, so it's, it's a comfortable environment. I mean, I am all for it. I met this beautiful sister. Her name is Kim Sue. Tell us what you do, Kim Sue. I am the aesthetic transformer. I concierge business. I come into your home and provide comfort and beauty. I just love what you do. What made you come up with that idea? I wanted to have a way for you to have comfort in your head. Okay. It doesn't mean because your style is fierce that you had to have a headache with it. Right. So I chose to give you comfort in your head and sexiness at the same time. I love that. I love that. So tell us about your business and where it's located and oh. how people can find you. Oh, so I am Kim Sue here Art on every social media. Okay. And my Spell it. K-I-M-S-U-E-H-A-I-R-A-R-T. On Google, and you will find access to me everywhere. Are you on social media? Are you on Facebook? I'm on Facebook, Kim Suhir Art. I'm on Instagram, Kim Suhir Art. I'm on Snapchat, Kim Suhir Art. Twitter, Kim Suhir Art. LinkedIn, Kim Suhir no, Art. Listen, listen, Kim Su. If I, if you came into my house and 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 I wanted you to do something for me, just looking at me, what would you do for me? I would give you a scalp assessment. I would assess your scalp okay. to see how you're really living. Okay. Because in the scalp, just the same way as the army and the feds, right. they check out your scalp. I check right. out your scalp to see check what's really scalp. going on. Okay. And what else would you do? That would give you an indication of what you need to That's do. That's right. Okay. And then we'll have a discussion about what kind of program you'd like to start. Okay. Just like the doctor would give you a prescription after right. his diagnosis, right. it's the same thing that I do. It's the same thing. So how long you've been doing this, Kim Sue? 18 years this September. 18 years. I love that. So this is a seasoned sister. This is someone who is about the business and is about, and she looks like us. Yeah. And, and you know what? <laughs> we have to support our own. Yes. So reach out to yes. Kim Sue. Reach out to her, you know, give her a call. Tell them again how they can reach you. 718-313-8970. And it's Kim Sue here Art at gmail.com. Link me. Thank you, Kim Sue. On three, let's say 
the empowerment series, you and I. Yes. Let's put some flair in it. All right. I know, I know. Shimmy? Wait, wait, listen. I know you're from Trinidad, right? Yeah. So let's, let's break it down, you know, for our people. Okay, how okay. Is that? All okay, right? yeah, so yeah, yeah. Let's, let's speak how we speak at I home. got it, I got All it. All right, so on three. One, two, three. The, the empowerment, empowerment series. series. <laughs> Everybody, this is Claudette Saint Rose, and I am back talking with one of my sisters, who was also one of the panelists for the Empowerment Series, Diana. So nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you as yeah, well. I love what you guys did. You know, so many times in 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 the world in life, you know, women need sort of an outlet. You need to talk to somebody who, you know, reinvent themselves. And I love what you said, how you reinvented yourself your mother being your role model I mean that is really powerful and your mother doing the things that she, she's doing still at her age it's a beautiful thing because it's a sisterhood and this is what we're supposed as women this is what we do so tell us a little bit about you and where you see yourself going okay well I um, I see myself continuing with this series I am committed to empowering women at any every level that I can um, touch them on I want to see them be physically strong, mentally strong, and totally independent and fully expressed. So to that end, I'm going to continue with the series, and I would hope that you will come back absolutely, for the next absolutely. one. Absolutely, and I know you said you're a contractor. Yes, Tell I... Tell people uh, where they can find you. Okay, well my company name is Bayside Builders Inc., and we have a website, BaysideBuildersNYC.com. And I am in the neighborhood here building new buildings all over the place. Thank you. Are you on Facebook, Diana? Um, yes, I am. What is your Facebook name? Stop I have Facebook. no idea. No? My daughter set it up. Okay. okay. Well, give for people, those that are watching, tell them your name. Spell your name. Diana, D-I-A-N-A, Cretella, C-R-E-T-E-L-L-A. But I do believe we also have Women for Action Brooklyn Limited somewhere on Facebook. Okay, on three, let's say the Empowerment Series, you and I. Okay. One, two, three. The, the Empowerment, Empowerment series. series. Heavenly crumb. I love this green on you and I love those earrings. Thank you. You look really beautiful. I love Thank that. Thank you. And not only that, one of the things that I love, when I come to events and I see that people that look just like me doing great things, you know, you feel, a, you know, you just, just a good feeling, you know? And tell us about you. Tell us about what you do. I'm a classically trained pastry chef, and awesome. I'm also a confectionery artist. My pleasure is to take people's ideas, their thoughts, and turn them into sugar. And for our community, we don't have, ex sometimes, we don't have excellent service. So what I try to do is, is the trifecta, bring excellent service, bake goods, design, um, I've created a business, Heavenly Crumbs. We've been in one location 13 years. We now move to our new location at 376 Marcus Garvey Boulevard in Bedside. But I've created a community. Um, we've maintained our patrons for, for the duration that we've had our doors open. And they're following us up to the new location. And it's really just about being excellent and, and giving the best of myself. And that's reflected back. Um, by our clients. Um, Shannon, tell us again the address of where your business is located for those that are watching. If they wanted to come out and, and try your pastries and try your cakes and try all that good stuff that you make. Tell it's people. 376A Marcus Garvey Boulevard between Jefferson and Hancock and Bedside. And when you go, ask for Shannon and just tell them that Claudette St. Rose from Believe in Yourself video sent you and Shannon will take care of you, I promise. Yes. Shannon, are you on Facebook? I am. I'm on Facebook. Right. What is your Facebook name, Shannon? It's Heavenly Crumbs. 
We're okay. also on Instagram and we have a website. Okay, so if people wanted to place orders, they can do that on Facebook too or no? You prefer people to call you? They would have to call. They would um, have to call you. Yeah. But you have, I imagine on Facebook, you have a display of all the beautiful pieces yes, and pictures do. you've done. Yes, we do. Okay. All right. Well, on three, let's say the Empowerment Series, you and I. Okay. One, two, three. The, the Empowerment, Empowerment Series. series. Our life that all of you consider visiting the criminal court building so you know how things are done, what needs to be improved, how you can get involved, because it's very important. And if I were to ask each one of you, how many people have been arrested or know someone that has been arrested, a lot of hands will go up. Thank you. 
this event with my fellow landmarkians and with the lab. Um, we thought of what a wonderful thing it would be to empower this community, and I'm happy to be a part of it. And thank you to everyone that came out. Uh, let's have a great time. I'm Kim Sue of Kim Sue Hair Art. I am um, the Aesthetic Transformer. I came today to be on this panel because I love influencing women. I love uh, empowering women. And I love um, our team, the Women of Action, Brooklyn Limited with Colette and Diana. Together we created a fabulous, fabulous, I'm telling you, we had a great time today at this first empowerment series. This is just number one. We're coming back with more, y'all. And I'm hoping to see everybody come out. Um, oh, let me tell you right away that you should come and support some of the businesses that are here today. We have a, a cupcake. Uh, that's phenomenal. We have um, health insurance. We also have superfoods. Like, you'll be surprised who is coming out to be a part with us. We would love to see you guys. Come on out uh, to our next Empowerment Women series. And we're expecting to see teens and we're expecting to see a lot of moms and grandmoms. Okay, I love you guys. See you, see you soon. And if you're looking to find Kim Sue here art, just Google me. I'll be there for you. Ciao. This is Ponente Rose and I am back here talking to people who come here on a regular basis and have fun here on Thursday with DJ B Rock. Hey, so we had the, hi, I'm having a great time. We had the legendary Just Lorraine Throwback Thursday with DJ P. Rock, who absolutely turned up and rocks out. Hey! Tell people where they can come on a Thursday. Tell them to come out. Lorraine's, uh, Just Lorraine's, 132nd and 7th Avenue from 6 o'clock to 12. And and happy hours from 6 to 12. $5 drinks on the house. Hey! This TJ is on the money. You got to come here every Thursday from 6 to 12. We'll have a full. Just let yourself go. You see what I'm doing. Thank you, sister. And there you have it. People are just enjoying themselves. The music, DJ P. Rocky has everybody on their feet. So come on out on Thursday, Lorraine. So come on out and join the people and have fun with DJ P. Rock. This is for that for Believe in Yourself video on location. Thank you. Peace. This is Nikki Sunshine, and you're watching DJ Mario TV. Tune in for the next big thing. Hello, everybody. This is Claudette St. Rose for Believe in Yourself video, and I am here supporting women's cause, something that is near and dear to my heart. Anything that's empowering to women, I am here and I'm standing with a powerful brother who is was also the moderator and this series is called the Women Empowerment Series. How are you Kurt? It's so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. This yeah. was a great event. It was. And you know it got me out of my comfort zone because you know I'm a Harlem guy. You are. So Harlem coming into house. BK, yeah. loving it. I love it. I love how you really made the panelists feel at home. Everybody oh. was very comfortable. And you know, you asked questions that were really near and there. So let me ask you, what really got you into doing what you do? Tell us a little bit about you. Well, okay, so now I work uh, for Harlem Community Development Corporation, which is a state agency. I've been in the space of uh, community development since 1989, first starting under the Dinkins administration. And all of my jobs since 89 have been in that space. I've been a president of Harlem Community Development Corporation since 19, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 2006. So literally I have served now so far four different governors. I came in under Pataki, Spitzer, uh, uh, David Patterson, and now Andrew Cuomo. So you've seen a lot. I've seen a lot. A lot, lot of changes. A lot of changes in the community. Uh, a number of them good, positive changes because we as residents in the community, we want what? We want choice. Exactly. And so with the uh, revitalization of Harlem, there's been more choices in terms of uh, places to eat, places to visit, uh, places uh, to live. You know, you have now a, a greatly improved housing stock in the community as well. So we're also excited at Harlem Community Development Corporation about one project that's near and dear to us on 123rd. That is the redevelopment of the historic Victoria Theater. I love that. I love that. And I love that. That's, that's going to be a really hotel. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, residential property 
below grade parking, a cultural uh, center that will house the Harlem Arts Alliance, Classical Theater in Harlem, uh, what's that, uh, the, uh, the Jazz Mobile, and then of course the Apollo Theater tell Foundation. Tell people, for those who don't know, tell them about the Victoria Theater, because a lot of people don't know. Tell okay. Them about that. That's part of our history, so, so they need to know. Thank you. So the, uh, the Victoria Theater is a historic theater created in uh, 1937 by famed architect Thomas Lamb. It is now going to be re uh, redeveloped because it uh, has laid fallow for uh, more than 20 something years. And so now with the redevelopment, it's going to actually house those particular elements that I said. It's going to be 385,000 square feet of redeveloped space. It will also be a hotel. Uh, and right now the uh, hotel brand that's been identified is the Marriott, the, the Renaissance brand of Marriott, Renaissance. yes. So we are really, really excited about this project. I love that. Curtis, where can people find you? I mean, if uh, they love what you did here, I mean, you've been so really dynamic. I, uh, I call you dynamic because this is what I saw when I came in. And I would love for you to tell people where they can find you. Well, I will, you know what, just just hear you say that. I want you to be my cheerleader. Do you really? Yes, I do. I really do. I want to be in touch with you because what you said to me, I wow. really need to be in touch Let, with Let's travel you. around the city and do this, okay? Okay. So if, they, so, so if you want to find out what Harlem Community yeah. Development, what we do, okay. you can uh, you can check us out on www.harlemcdc, harlemcdc.org, all right? On three. Let's say the Empowerment Series, you and I. One, two, three. The Empowerment, Empowerment Series. series.
Didn't I mention before that I said Barbara was a player showman? Okay, so I, I was player's director of economic development, but also her liaison to the African American community. Okay, so she gave me that opportunity, and that was what I credit as being one of the most impactful jobs that I have ever had. Because it also allowed me to see the real power base communities of color in what Southeast Point is. I didn't know that, because remember, I'm from the Bronx, so I didn't know that there was whole power dynamic there, so it gave me a real, real opportunity to see that. So then after that, going to the conference on the Devil Wright, and then the calling going out to the Rockaways. I was out in the Rockaways for close to eight years, heading up uh, Rockaway Development and Revitalization Corporation, a nonprofit organization in downtown Far Rockaway, Vermont Avenue. I was sitting up there, and one of the things before I started, I didn't know about Frank Wright and Ray and that stuff, right? Oh, Lord. You have to toughen yourself up, especially writing a brand and then hearing the word no. You might hear that a lot, but you gotta get yourself, pick yourself up, and keep doing it. Uh, there, I also learned that, you know what, my mom's people are from the you know, other islands, from St. Kitts. I'm surrounded by what I call the West Indian cabal. And if there's one thing I would say about West Indian women, are the strongest stop that you might find. I learned right there, as a man in that environment, to toughen up, but also rely on the people, and in this case, the women who have your back. Yes. Okay, and you should also do everything in your power, men, to support them and elevate them, because you're not, you're not going to find anybody better to do that. So, having said that, tell me about a positive female influence in your Y'all learn about empowerment and you know, how do you learn about support? Not until recently, I learned about women empowerment, honestly. Recently, like maybe about 10 years ago, when I became a more aware of it, it's not that it did not exist, it's that that's the time that I started to learn and understand women empowerment. Even though I have already been born and raised into women empowerment, but I didn't know nobody talked about it. I grew up in a very small place in Puerto Rico, basically with nothing. No telephone, no TV, no refrigerator. My mom was a cleaning lady, cleaning houses, for rich people in the city. And, but my mother and my sisters, there is also age difference on the last one. They were very independent. They will make their decision, like my dad was not, didn't have to be making the decisions for their But my sisters were very independent. They all worked. All the females in their family worked the same thing my mother. They went to school. Some of them had college. Some of them had college when they were adults. And nobody spoke about women empowerment or independence. The only thing we, those women, they, they did was to work to survive and to get an education. My dad had, a, had no education. He didn't know how to read and write on my mom there. But education was very important. And then I started, I observed, you know, very simple, very humble beginners education. I had to walk two miles in the morning and afternoon to go to school, basically with nothing. I graduated from, uh, from high school, or my school, graduated from high school, went to college. But one thing I noticed back then that when I started saying that I wanted to go to college, 
there was some resistance. It was like, wait a second, especially law school. Black women, Puerto Rican women, they, they don't make law school. And I believe it was because there were not enough models that we could look up to. When I And there are millions of people out there 
been around for a very long time. Okay, let me uh, move on. The, the woman that, this poor woman that really influenced me, I would say my dear grandmother. My grandmother worked really hard. In, um, when I was in Jamaica, as, as, a, as a child, my grandmother would uh, boil water and wash me before school. She would take me to the market. And back then, my grandmother would get coconut oil. <laughs> and if you know what it takes to make coconut oil, how many coconuts you have to bring yeah. and boil and skin to make that oil? Okay? She, she did it. And she did it week after week after week. You know? Then I think about my, my mother. You know, they always joke about how Jamaican people have a lot of jobs. Thank you. 
And she made sure we knew she did it. Because we couldn't smile after she did it. We were just as angry as she was after. So when I started um, Kids Who Hear Art, the premise of my business was to have hair with no pain. Beautiful <laughs> styles with no pain. Great energy going into your first chakra and just lifting you up. Um, just even if you just saw me once a month, just to lift you up for the day. Um, and so I attributed my business to my cousin. If she had never put pain in my head, I would have never turned the pain into comfort for others. So you just don't know how it would work, right? <laughs>
in uh, my calling, when I was in high school, I got two good scholarships that I turned down. So it's funny how God kind of pulls you back around, you know, from what you run away from. I love being dentists. I love helping people. I would do that stuff for free, and I've done it for free. Uh, I was president of a organization like Doctors Without Borders. Mm -hmm. uh, I went all over the world doing free stuff. And uh, I don't do that anymore, but I, I still support them. And where I see myself in, in 10 years, I see myself as a Bill Gates of food. He didn't invent the computer, but guess what? You can always make something better. <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to do with, with my product. Okay. Yeah. So I see myself with Bill Gates of food. And the way Bill Gates gives is the same way I want to give. Mm -hmm. All those humanitarian things that he support, I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to touch them and impact people and change people's lives by the Bill Gates of food. Because money is only a tool. Yes. Okay? Yes. Money is not your God. Exactly. Money is a tool yes. that you can use to help people and elevate people. Yes. And that's where I see myself. Yes. Yes. So, so Colette, do you also share that same thing? Because like I said, are these forms your way, your, your purpose that you see? Don't follow. Um, Yes, and no. Uh, um, really and truly, I want to see several things happen. The empowerment series is absolutely phenomenal. But for a people who have been distressed and they're still suffering from the PTSD, not only of slavery, but of Jim Crow and also a uh, lack of civil rights and it looks like we're repealing all the things that we had gained. Um, it seems like the fight continues, like we cannot ever stop fighting because um, things, the way it's set up, we're supposed to lose. And we have to continue to fight to make sure that we win. And the only way we can do that is if we have African think tanks. We really have to start thinking about our futures for our children, not just 10 or 20 years, 100 years in the future for our people and for humanity, period. Because what's going on? Now I'm teaching. 
they're not mentoring. They're not mentoring and they're holding on to positions because they, can, they are living longer. And what's happening is we literally have an age gap between, I would say, the mid-80s all the way to about the end of the 2000s, the end of the 90s, that that age was, that was where you saw crack coming into the neighborhoods. You saw um, more um, materialism became the god of all. Consumerism started to go on. You saw the advertisements um, become addictive. Um, and we started kind of like exhibiting these kind of addictive behaviors that started to tear us down from the inside out. And we need to purge a lot of the stuff that we learned in that time period. And we need to actually get back to my mom's generation and before, because the strength that was there came from the family. And I think that the family is the nucleus of the world. If you have a strong family, you will have a stronger world. It, and then we go to the community, and then there is a beyond the community is the nation, and then it's national, and then there's global. So I think, and then now, because the world is so small,
you go through life as if it's um, happening to us and we're not uh, shifting with it, we're not participating. Um, what I would like to do is to spend more time with people around the world, traveling. That's why I said about concierge business. I want to get into close proximity with people and talk to them about what's real, what really matters to them, what's really impacted, and create solutions together with workable action. I, I think gone are the days where we sit and we talk about what we have done, but it doesn't, it doesn't apply to me unless you show me how to do it. I can't do anything with that. That, that means nothing to me, your language is null and void, unless you're saying to me, these are the principles I apply. This is the steps I took. This is the ladder I and it, it, it might look enormous to me, but at least I know it's attainable. And this is what I'm going to do forever. Forever. I really would like to be uh, not only impactful, but in action with people. Because we, we're all connected. We look for so many differences, but we're so connected. As I talk to people, each person in this room came because they're so connected, they just don't know what the thing is. And I've discovered that throughout all of my journeys and speaking with people, and I enjoy it a lot. So that's what I'm going to do forever. And I set up my business in a way so that way, even if my children don't want to take it over, trust these might not want to take it over. <laughs> so there's an exit strategy, you believe that. <laughs> but for the rest of my life, I will be an influencer for the rest of my life. Excellent, excellent. I just want to say one thing. Hey, Shannon. Yes. Yes. Who made that amazing cake back there and those fabulous cupcakes? Nice. Okay. She has a shop on August Story. What's the address again? It's 376 Marcus Garden. 376 Marcus Garden. Nice. So see her. She's an artist. Okay. And an amazing baker. And I want to talk to thank Dr. Brown who came here at the last minute. Honestly, and we blessed, live with bliss, and we love.